I am not in prison. No, you're not in prison. Not physically. But you are in prison. You may today need money. And you say, Arthur, I'm still not like the fellows who are behind in uh, Sing Sing. All right, you're not behind jail doors. But you are still behind. Behind in rent. Behind in this. And the dunning notes from all the places where you charge, you are behind bars. You can't seem to find the necessary sum to pay them. All right. Look into the perfect law of liberty. That's the perfect law. Well, how do I do it? Rearrange the structure of your mind. The demagnetized piece of steel does not differ in substance from the magnetized. Only the arrangement of its molecules. And then one lifts up enormous weights when it's completely one-pointed. When all these molecules face one direction, it's a powerhouse. The other is scattered. What can you give a man who doesn't know what he wants? I've gone into a restaurant just to prove this principle. Sat down, said to the waiter, what would you like for a tip? And he's embarrassed. I said to my friend, I'll give him what he wants. Within reason, I'm not going to give him any hundred dollar bill, but I'll give him, if he said to me, a five dollar bill. He didn't order that which warranted a five dollar bill. And he was embarrassed and embarrassed and embarrassed. And all he expected was exactly what he got. He just didn't know. He just had no concept of putting something, of course he didn't know it, so how could he put it to the test? So I am telling you, you rearrange the structure of your mind. That's all you do. It doesn't differ from Einstein's mind. It's only one mind. Listen to it. So I'm not using a different mind. It's the same mind, but differently arranged. Go into one room and you see that someone doesn't know what to do with their furniture. Bring someone in who knows how to set a room. Come back an hour later after she's through with it. And you will think you're in an entirely different home. My wife used to pull that on me all the time. I'd come home and think I've stopped into the, I've just stepped into this entirely strange apartment. And wonder if I'm really at home. And she was hiding some other place. She had completely rearranged the structure of the furniture. It looked like an entirely different home. But she had that sense how to do it. And so she did it. So, with what you have, all you need is exactly what you have. For you have the mind of God. It's not a different mind, the same mind. And you simply rearrange the mind by a mere assumption. What would the feeling be like, were it true, that I am now the man that I want to be, now the woman that I want to be? But you're, it's added, but persevere. You must persevere in it. If I call you now and you answer, it's one thing. Well, will you respond an hour later to the same call? Then if you persevere, you will. If now, an hour later, you think of yourself as you now when you dare to assume that you are now the man that you want to be. An hour later, are you still assuming that state? If you're not, you're not persevering. You are the hearer who looked into the mirror with his natural face and he saw it. Then he went his way and at once forgot what he looked like. So if one hour from now you're not still assuming that you are the man that you want to be, you've forgotten. You are the hearer and not the doer. And he warns us of the vast difference between being a hearer and being a doer. The doer acts. So bear in mind that your wonderful world is not bounded by your senses. You perceive far, far more than your sense, no matter how acute it is, could discover. Your senses can't discover what now you're capable of assuming that you are. Your senses dictate what reason will allow and your reason your senses are bound together go beyond it for what you now know from experience what you know from the past will not be what you will know when you know more than you now know but having done it and proven it i know more than i did when i was bounded by my senses when i couldn't get out of a certain island on time to meet a commitment in milwaukee I knew what I did in the army. I simply applied the identical thing, and I got out. When there was a long, long waiting list, thousands waiting for all the islands, 
and only two little ships, not big ships, two small little ships, one carrying not more than 60 odd passengers and one carrying 120 and thousands waiting and they only came once a month into the island. One every 32 days and one every uh, three and a half weeks. How long would it take to get them all out? I didn't ask anyone a favor. Didn't ask my brother, who was a powerful businessman in the island. He criticized me for not arranging passage back to America when I left America. But that's the place where you should have done it. That's the powerhouse of the world, New York City. That's where all these things are done. And you dare to leave New York City when you could have arranged a round trip. And you come here on a one-way ticket. Well, I didn't ask any favors of him or any favors of any, any member of the family. I simply did exactly what I did in the army. And in 24 hours, I was called by the Alcoa Company and given my passage over thousands who were waiting. This is my concern why she did it or why someone else didn't get it in preference to mine. And I'm, my name is done at the very bottom. I wasn't at the top, I'm at the bottom of the list. It isn't my concern. I look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and I persevered. I sat in a chair in my hotel room, and there I sat in the chair, and as soon I am next to the boat, I'm climbing up the gangplank. That's before we had a deep water harbor, so you had to go off the sea about maybe a half mile or a mile to sea, on a little tender and then take the gangplank and, and go up to the ship. So I felt myself bobbing as you would on the ocean and then moving up the gangplank. I could smell the rawness of the sea. Got up to the top, if my mind wandered, I brought it back down again and did it all over again. It wandered, brought it back down again, kept on doing it over and over until finally I did it. I fell some to sleep sitting in the chair in the act of doing. Next day, Alcor calls me and gives me my passage for my wife and my little girl. So I'm telling you from experience, it doesn't fail, but we must not simply be hearers of the word. We must be doers of the word. For if you are a hearer and not a doer, you deceive yourself, he tells you. For we are the operant power. This law doesn't operate itself. It doesn't care if you're good, bad, or indifferent. Look around the world. 